Hey guys, I'm out here on the middle of Provo again. As you can see, I'm in some new waders. I picked up the Squala RS waders. Um, my Sims G3s were starting to get a few uh, pinhole leaks in them and it's probably time to get them off to Sims to get repaired and they're gonna be relegated to my backup waders and beater waders. So I'll test these out today, maybe have some feedback on them over the next few trips, but Excited to be in some new waders. I've been eyeing these Squala products for a while, so might as well. Also, since we've kind of been doing a little bit more serious fishing the last uh, couple weeks, we're gonna do something a little different today. I'm gonna do a use it and lose it challenge. So every time we catch a fish on a fly, we're gonna take it off and put a different pattern on and just see how many different patterns we can catch fish on. We can only use a pattern once and once we catch a fish on it, it's done for the day. So let's see how many fish we can get through. Storm's gonna roll in in about uh, three, four hours. We all, we're starting to get the W word, so hopefully that doesn't hinder us too much. I've got a dry fly rod and a uh, Euronymphing rod with me today. So uh, let's just see how many flies we can get through. All right. To start off here, I've got my Euro rod out and I've got a Bunny Royale and a Harry Zebra jig. Good old standard rig, just to get one on the board. See if we can get through some of these flies early. I'm seeing some midges on the water already. It was warm overnight. Uh, no heads, so if we see a good dry fly bite, we might need to stop and do that. But for now, we'll midge try and knock out a few of these patterns in this run. Not quite walking out yet. So I kind of want to get this middle bit of water. Maybe with the warmer temps will be in the faster stuff before we head over to that seam on the other side. Again, strike detection is going to be a little more interesting today with the W word. Might need to use this, so you can see the cider getting pushed by the breeze already. So we might need to upsize some patterns or fish a little closer, do all the things you need to do to manage the, when it's not calm out. Microliter helps as well, because it, it's just less surface area to get picked up and moved around. Flies cut through the water a little bit better. Okay, take one more step out here. Start hitting that seam. There's a fish. Fish have to get to the net too. Got to confirm the fly. The little guy. I'm on the one weight again today. Thought about bringing the two weight out, but might as well have some fun. What's he on? He is on the Harry Zebra Jig. Okay, not the bunny. Took the Harry Zebra Jig, took the midge. It's pretty telling. Okay. Put the hands here. Yep. Yeah, see, took the Harry Zebra jig on the dropper. So, that's one. One knocked off the list. Let's switch, switch this fly out. All right, to keep track of the flies, we'll say this bottom row is gonna be, bottom row in the little working box will be the flies that we successfully cycle through. So, 
Hopefully there's one in here we can pick out instead of going into the main box as well. Okay, next I'm gonna go jig over Achiever Midge. There we go. Might be a little better one. Also going downstream on me. Come on. Let's see if we can encourage them to come upstream here. Yeah, that is a good one. Okay. on the bunny. Uh -oh. Oh. Yeah. Off the big camera here. Okay. <laughs> and we're back. Yeah, that's a nice one. A little 15 inch or so. 15, 16. Yeah, that looks like an old fish too. Anyway. Okay, slipping everywhere. Yeah, ate the bunny. Don't see the fly. We're... There it is. Oh. Okay, let's catch and release tool you. Huh? A little snaky, but it's a good brown. Oh, there he is. Just chilling. Just chilling. There you go. Okay. There we go. It's on the Birdie Royale. Okay, number three. Ooh, this guy's been caught many a times. His jaw's a little uh, rough. Shallow water. Okay. Okay. Birdie Royale done. Let's see. And that guy was not getting unpinned. Okay. Birdie Royale. Alright. Next up is a DNA worm. Still got the overachiever midge on. Ooh. There's one. That was quick. This one's fighting weird. It's on the DNA worm. It's not that big.
might have them thinned anyway I guess a butt hook one does not count let's not count that okay dude relax relax yeah. in the side it's kind of a weird one does not count There we go. Yeah, this riffle might be loaded with them. DNA worm. Okay. This one counts for real. Don't roll, dude. Ooh. Hands are getting cold here. Okay, DNA worm. Oh. I'm gonna need to get a towel out so I can keep these hands dry and warm. Put the clutch back on. There we go. Pretty natural. Okay, little guy. We got him though. Oh, flies out. Okay, he was on the birdie natural. All right, next up is a two patch jig in green. There we go. Truffle is loaded with them. That's a better fish too. Yep, two patch jig and green. Okay. Nice, popped out. I saw he was on the bottom one now. Okay, that's fun. Next up, we got a Tasmanian Devil. Got a three mil bead on there. There we go. Maybe not. Maybe they just don't want the pink. Well, we'll see what fly this is. He's on. OK. 
can't tell size yet. I don't think it's that big. Yeah, it's not. Just angry. See you on. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> we managed to uh, thin another one, so doesn't count. He might have eaten the midge then. Is a midge in his mouth? Oh, yeah, he ate the overachiever midge, so. Since I see the fly in his mouth right there, and we broke off the fin him, we'll count it. See the overachiever midge right there? Okay, we might need forceps to get that out. At least we get my fly back. I think, or did he spit it? Oh, we did not. Spoke too soon, but he ate, so that counts. Over jig, overachiever, midge. There we go. Finally. That one took a while. Let's see what he's on. Looks like the SOS. Little whitey. Yep. Okay, dude. Oh. This is not ideal. Let's turn him back around. Up in the net. Okay, well, that's Spencer's SOS on the board. Man, it's been a while since we had neat. That's good. Okay, man. Upside down, just stay upside down. As long as you get the whiteies upside down, they'll usually behave. Okay, SOS done. the fish that we broke off on. Where'd we... How did we break off there? Well, that fish is going to be dragging a cider around. Yes! There we go. Corn fed midge. Decent one, too. Oh, 
Okay. It's wrapped up. Nice. Corn fed midge. Oh, sorry guys. Here. Black corn fed midge. It's the ninth fly. Got a dry fly eat. Okay, decent little fish. Let's go. Yep, experimental midge. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, let's be smart about this one. Or just lift his head up and pull. Nice, that's a good one. Whew. Cool. Yeah, he came up and ate it. That's a good fish. Need some humors here. Just a little bit inside the mouth. Okay, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't get the sleeve. Yet. There we go. We could have gotten that, I think. Yeah, it's a little hackle stacker, episode wing. Midge. Thank you again. All right. Cool. The experim experimental pattern worked. Have to keep playing around with it, find the right combo of stuff. But yeah. Let's see. If we were to measure this fish, it would be. 15, 16. Fifteen. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cold, windy, rain's coming. Anyways, we ended up with ten. Not bad, you know, fun little challenge. Of course we could have caught more fish if we just you know, fished our confidence patterns and just, you know, piled up on them, but it's fun seeing what they'll eat, what they wouldn't, you know, presentation or pattern. I think it's a little of both, you know. I think you need a good presentation no matter what, but the pattern can make a difference between uh, it's the amount you catch, so. I, don't, I think people that say, oh, pattern doesn't matter, it's just presentation. I don't think there's a ton of truth to that, but I do agree that, uh, you know, presentation's a necessary condition to catch fish. But uh, as you can see, these Provo Middle Browns and Whitefish will be a bunch of different patterns anyway. If you enjoyed this video, like it down below, subscribe. Like I said, I'm going to be tying at the Wasatch Expo on March 15th and 16th. I'll have a tying table and I'll be hanging out in Joe Bradley's Bamboo Rod booth. So hope I can see you guys there. Anyways, thanks for watching.